Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know is that this is 4F Beauty and if I've done it right, you're watching me in black and white right now. But um, if not, welcome to Glorious Technicolor. You will have seen from the thumbnail the title and if you have read any of it, the description. That this is episode 42, 42 of my pick series. And this time I am delighted to go for a second round with the lovely Laura from Gold Star Work. So, as I have said for some time now, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, my lovelies, welcome back from the intro. Okay, you will have seen from the intro that this is episode 42. 42 of my pick series, uh, which is just bloody astounding to me. Um, the series came to me in a blinding flash. At, at stupid o'clock, uh, thanks to Painsomnia. And I ran with it, thinking might get maybe seven or eight episodes out of it. 42, which I love because it means that it, it, it kind of validates the fact that, yeah, do you know what? You can actually produce something that people are finding interesting. And yes, I know I've been wearing my black tops with the strappy sleeves, but all of them are in the wash now. So I'm back to the one that keeps sliding off my shoulder in, as my friend Hedda would say, a rather sexy come hither but no farther kind of way. Um, yeah, it, it kind of validates the fact that, you know, I can actually produce something that people are finding interesting, not just you sitting there watching and listening to me blether. Um, but also my, my fellow makeup enthusiasts and makeup artists, um, because if, if, if they didn't want to join in, it wouldn't be much of a collaboration series. Uh, for those of you who have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, Pick is a series where we agree on a photo, on a picture or a photo or a painting or something, um, to use as inspiration for an eye look. I always give the collabor the, the collabi first choice. This time collabing with the lovely Laura from Gold Star Work. She's an artist and she actually trusted me to recreate one of her paintings last time. Because I, I always give them first choice and she's like, can we do one of my paintings? And I'm like, I was really hoping you were going to say that. And I've said like, I don't know how many times and I'm starting to sound like an American, I apologise. <laughs> Pain levels are up there somewhere, um, so you're either going to get slightly subdued me or slightly manic me trying to push through the pain. We have yet to see which that will be, but right now it appears to be the manic one that can't shut the hell up. Hmm. Right, so we have a picture as inspiration. There are two rules. One, you can only use colours in the picture. You can't add anything in that's not there. But rule number two is you don't have to use all the colours if you don't want to. So this time it was my turn to choose the picture and I chose this which is obviously taken from inside a cave with stalactites. Yes because mites grow up and tights fall down. Yeah. So you're looking out of cave with obviously water filled cave 
stalactites coming down, cliff, opposing coastline, and from the colour of that I would say sunset rather than sunrise. So for me, the colours that, that draw my eye are the mauvey pinks of the stalactites, the bright yellow of the sun, and if you look to the left of the picture, did I say I've put the picture up here? I've put the picture up here for you. Mm. To the left of the picture, you've kind of got... I'm guessing this is somewhere bloody cold like Antarctica. Even though... It, no, because it looks like there's people on the beach. But it looks like there's more stalactites on the left-hand side. And they're glowing up the most beautiful electric blue. So for me, mauves, yellow, electric blue. That's the colours that I'm going to be electric blue. concentrating on today. Oh, I am really losing the plot today, folks. <sighs> um, two palettes I'm going to use today. My you can be bubble nebula that I still haven't used yet. Look at that hollow, isn't that? Oh, hello. Is the palette the same? Yeah, palette's the same. Okay, good. All the ingredients are on the back of the palette, which means I haven't got to save the cover. Awesome. This is the Huda dupe. Mm -hmm. I think it was a magpie in a previous life. Um, Mine had a couple of shades that did actually arrive broken, which is rather frustrating. But I have repressed them. The broken shades were this one here and this one here. Thankfully both shimmers, so quite easy to repress. But you can see there's some really nice sort of mauvey pinks just here that I can concentrate on. And then, let's get a little plastic condom thing. I've pulled out my one of my favourites, my, certainly in my top five palettes, this one. Probably top three, actually. It's my slush palette from September Rose. And you know I'm going to be going in with Blue Lagoon, because... Look at that. Isn't that just... Ooh. Um, <laughs> in terms of the yellow, I'll probably use um, the Jeffrey Liberace highlight for my inner corner for the yellow. So, that's the plan. This remains, however, a teaching channel, despite the fact I've blethered on for God knows how long without really explaining much at all. As such, the fact that I want beginners to be able to keep up with me, combined with my pain levels, means it's going to be a longer film than the majority of films. I've got a collab coming up in two days where We've got to try and get our films down to 20 minutes. It's going to be fun. Because mine are usually at least 30, 35, 40 minutes long. So, settle yourself down. That's why I've always said grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up. And enjoy, or indulge, depending on which end of the film we're at. And, uh, <laughs> I get quite a few people messaging me going, have you heard that such and such has been using that now? And I'm like, <sighs> No, I hadn't. That's another one to add to the list. Thank you. Anyway, it is a teaching channel. If I'm going too slowly for you, or you're just sick and tired of hearing me blether and just want to speed things through, there is a speed widget up there. Feel free to use it. Now, one of the things that I noticed very early on, particularly when I first started the channel, I've got deep set eyes, but for a long time I thought they were hooded because I was seeing people with my eye shape saying they'd got hooded eyes. One of the benefits of pain insomnia is that you, you read a lot at two in the morning, three in the morning. Something pops into your brain and you either go shopping if you've got money in your account, which 
At the moment I haven't because oh, I'll go some shopping this week. Oh, um, or you start researching stuff and on I've started to research different eye shapes to see what other advice I could give to people who have got different eye shapes to myself and then I realised I've actually got deep set eyes, not hooded eyes. So I have included in all my films since then a little clip explaining the difference between both types of eye because they do have very very similar issues in terms of how your eyeshadow wears through the day and the application issues that you have particularly on things like cut creases um, and the workarounds for how best to apply makeup to those eye shapes to get the best look out of them, to get the most flattering look out of them are actually quite different. For those of you who have not seen any of my tutorials before, when I say I zoom in I don't just sort of zoom in to here, I zoom in to here. So even if you're watching me on a reasonably small phone screen you can see what I'm talking about there's no distractions around me, you can just concentrate on what I'm doing with my eyes. So, you've been pre-warned, don't scream when it suddenly comes up close and personal. Here's a clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this, it is not affiliated, I don't earn money from it but if you use my code you save I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease I have to cut onto the upper lid not just through the socket and if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye, you can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see 
I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hey, I am back. Right. Um, I will be applying the makeup and chatting to you a little bit about my lovely friend Laura, who is collabing with me. Uh, so I'm going to start off with this You Can Be Bubble Nebula Changeable palette. Can we crack the spine and fold it back? Yeah, we can. Good. Like so. I'm going to be concentrating on these three shades here, which are not named. Excellent. Just as well I pointed them out to you then. So, that one, that one, and that one. This brush is one of the brushes from the AliExpress set that I recommend in my film listed down there. And this is Eye Crease Brush number 8. It's basically a rounded, soft-headed uh, blender brush, medium head spread. And when I say medium head spread, I do mean medium because I've got ones that puff out like that. So just remember, whatever the width of the the brush head is, how far the eyeshadow will be blended out. So choose according to your eye shape and size. Right, we're going to start with the Viennese Waltz application. Trust me, this will make sense. Okay, there's a reasonable amount of kick up in the pan. I don't know if you can see that. I just leave the um, kick up on the top there and then just pick up the loose pigment when I want to build the colour. So, hold the brush right at the end to put as little pressure on as possible. Uh, for those of you who are wondering what happened to my acrylics, I took them off because I think I need more practice. Because um, I was still getting lifting around the cuticle. So, I've put these on. These are the nails that one of my lovely viewers sent me when she sent me the um, uh, Dominic Cosmetics Mini Palette was in her boxy charm. She sent me these as well, so thank you Shari. Much appreciated, as you can see. Currently in use. So, the Viennese Waltz of Blending. Why do I call it that? Because we start off with natural turns towards the nose. We do a bit of a fleckle when we get there. And then we do reverse turns to come back out. Obviously I've very much overemphasized the size of the turn we're doing but I will now start to apply and explain why I'm doing it this way. Um, I always start from the outside edge because if you do get a sudden whoomph of pigment it's much easier to blend it out over here where you've not got your nose in the way. And I like to leave sort of four or five mil if I can between the top colour and my brow. Sometimes I take it all the way up. Depends on my mood on the day. But the reason that I do this is actually blending really nicely. Um, the reason I do the Viennese Waltz blend as opposed to the windscreen wiper blend, which I do incorporate in some places, but I, I normally start with the winds with the Viennese Waltz because I'm 46 years old. 
have lost over 14 stone, which is over 200 pounds. So the skin on my eyelids moves. My left eye, I've got some super, super deep creasing just here, just by your yeah, look, which was caused from my eye being pulled around when I was five years old at the Ophthalmic Hospital, so that's 40 odd years ago. Um, and I'm now seeing the effects of that damage. By doing this particular movement, you are gently moving the skin of your eyelid without tugging or pulling at it, and you're ensuring that you get proper coverage of colour without getting the tiger striping or barcoding effect that you can get if you do windscreen wiper and your skin bunches up. Okay. And when I'm applying the um, shade to the eye, I will also sit back and just look at them both and make sure I've got similar shapes both sides because your eyes are not symmetrical unless you're like a certain Jimmy Chuck and Photoshop the shit out of everything. Well, I don't do that. What you see is what you get. Anything I create, you can create with practice and patience. Okay? So, the lovely Laura. Um, I met her first through, I think, a collab that Anya had organised. Um, it was a larger group collab. You know, Anya is the queen of collabs, bless her. I absolutely love the woman. She's introduced me to so many new creators that, that I absolutely adore. Um, and we'd been in a few sort of group collabs, but hadn't actually collabed together. Um, and then we were in the Three Continents One Palette collab with Nona, where we all use Colourpop palette and create different looks. But I'm just going to clean this brush off. I used to use colour switches and now prefer to use a microfiber cloth or a washcloth or a face cloth or a flannel um, or an old towel or a piece of kitchen paper because colour switches are far too harsh on your brushes, especially your natural hair ones. This is synthetic but even so. And I'm going to go back into the uh, mid-tone shade. So I'm going to come into this one here and I'm going to do exactly the same movements, same brush, just a little bit further down, closer to my crease to build a nice gradient of colour. So yeah, we'd been in the Three Continents One palette and I suddenly realised that I'd not actually asked her to join in my pick series. Um, and as I said, Laura is an artist, so it's, I will admit, I was a little bit intimidated at first, not because she's not a nice person, because she's lovely, but the thought of collabing with someone one-on-one -on -one who is an artist, um, so has much more understanding of colour theory. I mean I've got a pretty good understanding of colour theory from having worked in the print industry um, and obviously knowing the four colour process and Pantone process and you know CMYK, RGB etc etc that will mean nothing to most of you but printers will be nodding their head right now. Um, these are blending really nicely together but uh, I messaged her and she's like, oh my goodness, yes, I would love to. And I'm like, oh, thank goodness for that. And then when she suggested um, using one of her photo, one of her paintings as the first inspiration piece that we did, um, that was such an honour that, that something she had created, she thought that my skills were good enough to represent 
the element or the theme or the, the feeling of that painting and recreate it in colours on my face because that's all we're doing with makeup, we're just painting our face. Uh, it's no different to sort of playing with poster paints when you were a kid and getting smacked across your flipping backside by your mum because you painted a great white stripe across your nose claiming to be Adamant in Prince Charming video but that's a completely different story for a different time. These are really blending lovely together. I'm not surprised I've, I've, you know, I've used the You Can Be brand palettes before and they are lovely. We all know Huda is on my shit list, <clears throat> if you want to know why. My hit shit list, hit, hit shit and limbo list film is live on my channel. I have two, I have my original hit list and shit list. Or hit list and star list, I think I called it back then. And this year I redid, or oh, tail end of last year, no, I think it was this year. I did hit list and limbo. Hit shit and. Oh, mm. Um. So I, I adore Laura, she's just. I'm pretty sure I say this every time we collapse, but. Her voice is so soothing and so sweet and so gentle that I always think of her as Titania, Queen of the Fairies. Honestly, it, it, I was reading Midsummer Night's Dream through again on my Kindle app on my phone at one of my pain somnia moments and I realised that when I was reading Titania's words I was hearing Laura's voice. So she is my Queen of the Fairies from New Zealand. Absolutely adore the woman, really do. Right, I'm now going to go in with this angled shading brush, number four, which is more oval because I want to control how far I take this deeper cranberry shade. Because I want to try and concentrate it in the crease without losing too much of this really lovely blend we've got going on. So again just same thing but obviously on its side because it's an oval blender. You don't have to use an angled one I just like it because it's easier to get down into the corner there when you've got an angled brush but you can use a straight across or oval it's not an issue. And just tiny little blend, tiny, tiny, tiny little circles to blend. When I do the um, shimmer on this lid, I will have to be a little bit different in how I treat that eyelid, but I'll show you that when we get there. For the minute, I'm just building up this outer corner. So, yeah, Laura lives in New Zealand. So as we are coming out of spring and heading into summer, she's heading out of autumn and heading into winter. Um, and I know she's... New Zealand were locked down a lot, lot tighter than the UK and the US were. And she's in a reasonably small town or village where she is. Um, and she and her husband have recently gone on to the keto diet. And on one of her most recent films she was saying about just how expensive food is in New Zealand with them, you know, being on an island and having to import a lot of food. Um, but also, because she's in a small town, the options for keto food is not as plentiful as in larger towns and oh boy is it expensive. So I feel for her for that at the moment, especially coming into winter because winter you want your comfort foods don't you, you want your stews and your casseroles and your shepherd's pie with lashings of gravy, 
Mm, gravy. Sorry, having a moment there. There's two things in life you can never have too much of. Gravy and custard. But not on the same plate at the same time. That, that, that wouldn't work. Unless it's a pregnancy gravy. Then it might. You know. My well, Auntie Barbara used to crave strawberry jam and pickled onion sandwiches. And yes, as a kid, I tried strawberry jam and pickled onion sandwiches. Bizarrely, it's kind of like sweet and sour, but the British version. I quite liked it. I really like how that has blended. Because the deeper the tone, the more colour pigments you've got in it, obviously. The more difficult, generally, they are to blend. But this is blending like a dream. It really is. Well, you can see it is, because I don't cut any of my blending out. I leave it all in there for you. Yeah, I um, I don't mind buying dupe palettes where they're using the same or similar colour layout. But obviously this is called the Bubble Nebula, not the whatever Huda called hers. Can't even think now. Um, but I don't like buying fake palettes. So if this was claiming to be a Huda palette, I would not be using it. But this is the You Can Be version. Um, normally, if it's an indie brand um, and it's been duped, I won't even buy a dupe palette because that's not fair on the indie brand. However, Huda's on my shit list. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned... She's also been, uh, well if you watch my hit and shit list you'll find out why she's on the shit list. But the fact that she basically copied the marketing campaign and style of a smaller indie brand from a woman who'd, who's uh, recovered from cancer. The fact that she sort of nicked their entire ethos for her setting powder campaign pissed me off, basically. So, as far as I'm concerned, who does fair game? Plus, you can't call yourself cruelty free if you're selling mink lashes. I don't care what you say about having a pet mink and combing it every day, which is a load of bull, but there's no such thing as cruelty free mink lashes unless they're. Imitation mink. There, do you know what? I'm really enjoying that blend. That is, that is blending so nicely. Why haven't I used that palette before? Because I've been buying so many and I've had so many collabs and new series going on that not got around to it yet. Right, clean that brush off. And, uh, so I, I have issues with this Blooming Cucumber setting spray. I kind of have to unscrew it, pump to get anything out of the tube then put it back in and pump to get it to spray at the moment but using it up this is the cucumber scented one right going in with the morphe m321 brush which is that sort of shape quite firmly packed but still a blender kind of thing never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush you will kill the pigment right Going into Blue Lagoon in the Slush Palette, which is absolutely one of my favourite shades. My favourite shades, look at that. 
Right, wet the brush, wet the pigment. Always dry your ferrule off. Easiest way to do that is tuck it in your knuckles and spin. Because you don't want moisture coming down here and loosening the glue, because then you won't have a brush, you'll have a stick. Now I'm going to apply, oh look at that, I'm going to apply this to the lid, can you see why I love this shade, oh, every time I pick up the slush palette I have to make myself use different colours because I always want to go for this. Otherwise I would never use the rest of the palette. This is just, look at that. Just, 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 just. All right, I'm just gonna clean that brush off. And I'm gonna use the very, very tip of the bristles just to lightly buff and blend where it meets that outer edge there. Just to soften it a little bit. How pretty is that? And I'm going to go back into the Blue Lagoon. Remember the first time I watched that film with my mum? Got all worried when um, Brooke Shields started bleeding. Oh, well, what's she done? And mum went, oh, don't worry, you'll experience that before long. <sighs> right, now. Because of these deep set creases here, you can see the tiger striping that I'm getting. I do have to stretch this lid out. I always advise you not to do that, but I unfortunately have to, because if I don't, what happens is the pigment collects loosely in those creases and then flakes into my eye through the day. It gets very painful, very irritated. So, if you have a similar issue, here is how to stretch the lid with as minimal damage as possible. So, come to the, about, see how wide the creasing is. Leave the same width again, then put your finger on and gently stretch the lid out. Only stretching it as far out as I need to, to straighten the crease so that I can get a good blend. Once I have blended, I let go and then finish the rest of the lid as normal. So you only stretch the part of the lid that is already damaged. You only stretch it as far as you need to, to straighten it out, so you don't pull it out to your ear roll. And as soon as you are done, you let go. And then just use the tip of the brush just to blend. That is still one of the most beautiful colours I've ever used. I do have a code for September Rose. She was the first company to ever give me a discount code when I didn't even have 300 subs. I absolutely adore her for that. But I also, as you know, would not recommend products to you if they were shite. Right, my lovelies, I'm going to pause you while I go and pop some base products on. So I will see you when I come back. For you it's going to be instant, but I'm, I'm going to have to wait a few minutes. So I'll see you right now. Hello, I am back. Today I did pomade brows instead of soap brows. Because I wanted a dramatic brow. Um, this is Revolution Pomade in Burgundy Red, if you can get it. Um, they seem to have stopped doing the coloured pomades. That's why I stopped using them on camera. Um, I was doing soap, brow and powder, which of course you can still do. You can still just 
soap your brows up um, and then choose that deep burgundy powder and just powder it through your lashes. Okay. Not quite sure why I said it like that, but there we go. Oh, hey fever. Right, back into me bubble nebula and flat top brush. And I'm going to go into that shade again. And I'm going to link it up and run it along underneath the lash line. Now, regular viewers will know I rarely, if ever, put anything in my waterline because I've always had super watery eyes. Add to that fibro, one of my symptoms for fibro is very, very watery eyes. Add to that hay fever. And hubby cut the grass yesterday. And you basically get a watery mess. So I prefer to smoke out my lower lash line instead and yes I just poked myself in the eye <sighs> do that a lot that side because obviously I don't have any peripheral vision being blind in it which is lovely now you can use a smudger brush for this next bit but I love this one this is the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette it's flat top like the last one but it's junky I like them big. I like them chunky. And I'm going to go into that second shade that I used, the mid tone. I like them big. I like them blumpy. We actually had that played at our wedding reception. We had our first dance. And we had our father daughter, well, parents dance. Because obviously I dance with dad and Chris dance with his mum. And when we got to the first chorus, we said any other parents and children that want to come and join us can do. So my stepmom and my brother came and danced. And it was really nice. And then we uh, had like a little montage, a mix-up of three different songs. Fat Bottom Girls by Queen, because, well, you have to. I like them big. I like them junky. And uh, big girl, you are beautiful. Right. <laughs> I've just realised I didn't get the um, highlight out. So what I'll do for the minute. I'll grab my face highlight that I'm going to use. I'm going in with this. This is actually the MAC Star Trek edition. This is Lunar Luster. It's a little bit more subtle than what you're used to seeing me wear. But I just... I love this and I hardly wear it now. So I thought I'd give it a whirl today. This is just a cheap lip brush that I bought from eBay ages ago. And tuck a little bit of that up under our brows. Like so. Right. I'm going to pause you, chuck some inner corner highlight on from the Jeffrey 24 Carat palette, chuck some more of this on my face. Mascara, lippy, do something with my hair. I'll be back with my finished look, so don't go anywhere. I am back. Okay, so using the Jeffrey 24 Carat Palette, I went in with a Liberace for my inner corner for the sun. Mascara is my little mini it. Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. Lippy is from Jeffrey's 
mini blue set and it's Titanic. I hope this look isn't sinking um, because I wanted to pick up the deep blue of the sea and I haven't done powerful <laughs> weird coloured lips for quite a while. So I thought why not and that matte highlighter is more highlightery than I remember. So that's going to stay in the um, mix for a little while. I think I might crack that out a bit more often. So this my darlings is my finished look. Here's the picture again which was my inspiration. What do you think? If you had been collabing with me which colours would be calling you from that picture? Would you have done your look like this or are you thinking, good God, woman, you have bright blue lips, what the hell are you playing at, you're 46 years old? Yes, I am, and I'll have whatever colour damn lips I feel like having. Hmm. Um, confession time, I didn't actually buy the mini blue set because I've got all of his other blue shades. But someone on Depop was selling some of theirs, so I bought the two shades that were unique to that set that hadn't been released as full size. So I've got a Titanic, which obviously I'm wearing, and then this one is Ice Tray. So that's the two shades that were unique to Ice Tray is like a bluier version of Delicious from the Family Collection and to be honest Titanic reminds me very much of Abused but it's got that kind of shimmery mica in it that when you press your lips together gives a bit of a sheen so there we go Here's what I have the show. Right. If you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing you. But cheekily, they are leaving me in your news feed, so it's not obvious that you have been unsubscribed. Um, when you're checking your subscribed status or status, please also check that your notifications are on. Once you've done that, hitting a like leaving me a comment about which colours you'd be drawn to in there uh, would be super helpful, super interesting for me because I love hearing from you but also it will help push the film out to people who perhaps haven't already had the joy of uh, the nonsense that is this channel at times uh, once you have done that I'm going to need you to go across to the beautiful Laura and see exactly what the artist has made of the inspiration photo. Will she have been drawn to the same colours as me? Will she have been drawn to different colours? Which palettes will she be using? Will she be using stuff from her Shop My Stash? Or will it be some of her individual shadows? Or will she go for palettes like I did? There's only one way you can answer Did I ask for you to do that? Actually, you're kind of cute. I might leave you there. There's only one way you can answer those questions, and that is to go to her channel and find out. And once you are there, please remember to give a like, subscribe to her if you haven't already, and leave her some love in the comments in the same way that you always do in mine. If you are here from Laura's channel or you have discovered me in some other bizarre way, hi, hello, welcome, glad you're here. Uh, it would be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family. There is a super easy way to do that. There is a bright red subscribe button. If you were to click that and turn it grey, you then get the option of ringing a bell. And if you ring the bell, you then have many options to say yes and all of them. And hopefully YouTube will tell you at least one in every four of my films that are going up. Will my phone please shut up? 
It's always the way. It's dead quiet when I'm not filming. The minute I film, shh. Now then, as I was saying, um, hopefully YouTube will tell you at least one in four of my films that go up. Speaking of my films, I have an awful lot of others you can choose from. I mean, there's 41 previous episodes of the Pick series for a start. So, uh, basically, pick a playlist, grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and indulge. And now, my darlings, all that remains for me to say, as ever, is you'll stay fabulous, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.